Here in Socialist Canada, if you don't subscribe to the socialist belief, if you don't believe that we need to pay over half our money in taxes in order to support this big brother government, if you don't believe in the moral obligation to help the fellow man, I'm not saying that, I, that there's anything wrong with helping the fellow man, but if you don't believe that it is your duty to give your assets, your rights, your property for the betterment of other people, then you, you're an idiot in Canada. Let me tell you how this kind of started the past 20 years. In America, there was George Bush for eight, and we watched him. He was an absolute disgrace to the country of America. Um, whether, or not, whether or not you want to agree with that or admit it, he was. He was a disgrace, and he was a conservative. At least that's what they say. And then after here, uh, in 2006, we got rid of our liberal government, and we put in Stephen Harper of the Conservatives. Now, at this point, okay, the way that our elections work is that you just need the most votes in each seat. So if you get only 34% of the votes and the other two candidates from the other two major parties get 33 and 33, you with the 34, even though it's nowhere near a majority, you actually win that seat. And um, the person with the, or the, sorry, the party with the most seats ends up becoming the government. So our conservative government actually, they only received about, I think it was 39% of the votes that actually were cast. They only received that much, okay? But because there's such a, an apathetic voter turnout here, it was only around half the people eligible to vote that turned up. So we're talking, it's only around, you know, high tens, like 17 to 20 percent of the nation voted this guy in. Okay, so he does not speak for the, the majority of the nation. And one of the big things on this is that we have two more or less left-wing parties and they split the vote. So you have a lot of left-wing people that they don't necessarily get their voice heard quite so much. And this is evident okay, in, in the turnout of the elections. Um, you see a conservative prime minister. Now, you know, there's almost 20 years of this conservatism that we deal with because America does affect us. So, like the presidency of Bush did affect us and Stephen Harper certainly affects us right now. But what's going on is we're now starting to equate in Canada that you're either left-wing, right, and you're progressive and you're a good person. This is what they're equating it with, that left means good, right, or you're left-wing, or sorry, you're right-wing, and uh, you're an asshole when it comes to social issues. And uh, they basically post all these stereotypes on you so that when you go to any rally now, okay, if you ever go to any type of protest, what you're going to see in almost 100% of the time is that it tends to be one big massive rally for our third left-wing party. Now, they're actually in second right now. The NDP have the second most amount of seats, but they've always been looked at as the alternative or third wheel kind of thing of our political system because they're so far left comparatively to our more or less central liberals, okay? Our liberal, liberals mean something a little different here. It's a little less socialist. So, what's going on is we have this government that does not represent the people, and people are getting ticked off. When you go over to those, uh, those rallies, you better be ready to be anti-capitalist, even though they probably can't, can, they can't even um, define to you what capitalism is. Most people, when they define capitalism, when they're on the left wing, they tend to spell out to you the exact definition of crony corporatism, not capitalism. That's the opposite. And see, what they don't realize is, is that these big corporations that they keep talking about, they do, they have all the money, right? So think about it. If you wanted to run the world, you wanted to gain more power, you wanted to gain more control of keeping the money and property that you have. Would you rather a group of individuals that think for themselves that you need to uh, convince individually and then allow them to make their choice? Or would you want a centrified, socialized group of people at which it's conducted by a head government or whatnot? They make the decisions for healthcare, education, all that kind of stuff. If you're a big corporation, you just need to convince these people, these people that are at the top, because the decision has already been made 
to who owns your free will. When you make that vote to a socialist, you give up your free will. And you do that for the greater good of people. Well, what happens with that is free speech suffers. Have you guys ever gone to one of these rallies and then say that you're not a socialist? See what happens. I went to the TPP one time and it was the people that was leading the... Uh, what was his name? It was Seamus in the TPP. You can actually see this. Uh, it's in one of my older videos. And he's there talking. You know, they were perfect with me at first. Like, awesome. You know, you're here to go against the TPP. And I was like, yeah, I am. And then they started talking about capitalism. It was like, you know, it, not that I, I am a capitalist. I don't consider myself a conservative. But I certainly don't consider myself liberal. So, and in many issues, especially the fiscal ones, I tend to be... Uh, I tend to identify much more with conservatives. Now, when I said that, their attitude towards me went from, oh, he's one of the guys, to he's a fucking asshole. And I wasn't even really criticizing. You know, like, I, I was just trying to start a conversation, but as soon as I mentioned that I was not socialist, the conversation stopped, and I was a different person. It was very, very evident. And you'll see this a lot everywhere. Basically, all these rallies for social change, for, for justice coming in, for revolution, it's all socialist propping up this movement, which is the absolute opposite of what we really want. We, what we need are people that can think for themselves and not just join in in any uh, herd mentality thought that's out there. That's what we need. We need some people to start thinking. Not just following the Young Turks. Um, you know, Snoop Dogg when he supports Hillary, you know, because she's a woman. Or, you know, supporting a Barack Obama because he's black. I mean, this is absolute... It's lunacy. <laughs> Why do we do this to ourselves? And how can we actually think that a socialist government at which we give up our liberties... You know, how, how can you trust them to really make decisions on your behalf for the better of you? How do they even know what you need? How do they even know what you want? You're too busy marrying different corporations while they claim to you that they're against them. Now there's no difference too. I, I wanna end this off saying that anybody who believes that voting, like in America, voting for someone to get rid of Obama, you think that's gonna help that? You really think he's the problem? You really think the Democrats are the problem? You know, you're no better than anybody saying the Republicans are the problem then. Or that in Canada here that the, oh, it's, it's got to be Stephen Harper. He's, he's obviously, you know, the mastermind behind this bullshit, of course. But what it seems to be is every conservative government seems to look so stupid that you have to go over to the left wing in order to feel like you're doing anything good for your country. And it's sickening. Socialism is out of control. And I think it may just be the death of any liberty that we have in this side of the world. This is Justin, and it's been the Ottawa Expositor.